All right, hello again, my fellow electron microscopy aficionados. So, sorry, a little bit delayed here with getting the DCFI video up, but that's what we're going to do now. I'm actually doing this the day after I did the beam shower video. So, a little bit delayed, but, you know, hey, you make a promise, you got to keep it. So, um, so anyways, we're going to talk about doing DCFI in TEM mode. So let me go over to Velox here in acquisition and start the live view. And there's our image. So these are the particles that we're interested in. So I don't know if you can tell, but the sample is slowly drifting upwards here, okay? So we do have some, some movement um, in the image, okay? So DCFI in TEM mode, um, it doesn't get the usage that it does in STEM mode because you know, part of the reason for that is in, in TEM mode, your uh, acquisition times are much shorter, right? It's usually just a matter of, you know, a second or maybe or two to acquire an image, whereas it can be, you know, the better part of a minute to acquire a STEM image, okay? So you have less, you're, you're, you tend to be less affected by instability in TEM imaging, but, um, and it's, of course, that instability becomes easier to see the higher your magnification is, okay? Um, but we can still, um, we can still deal with it by doing drift corrected frame integration, okay? So if you come to the, the camera panel here and you click on this last button, which is the series mode, okay? So, once again, specify your readout area and size. So I'm using full frame and, and just 2K and then exposure time. Okay, so just like in STEM mode, we're gonna reduce the time per frame. Okay, um, but unlike STEM mode, because we're in TEM mode now, we're collecting each pixel in parallel. So we're doing an exposure time of 200 milliseconds for the whole frame. Now you wanna keep this short. Okay, you want to keep this. I like to use 200 milliseconds. Um, you could also go down to 100. I wouldn't go lower than that. I mean, again, you want to make sure that you're you're getting you know some decent signal in the image at you know whatever this time is because otherwise you're basically going to be just summing up noise. Uh, frame combining, you you don't need to worry about here. But then the series the series size. So this. Um, 10 is usually a good number to use. So again, if, if you have 200 milliseconds per frame and you have 10 frames, that's gonna give you roughly the equivalent amount of signal of doing a two second exposure, okay? Uh, again, but the key here is that we need to keep this time per frame short because if we keep this short, then the effect of the instability is going to be negligible, okay? Whereas if we come over here, if we're doing the one frame for one second, right, then the effect of that instability becomes more more obvious. And again, depending on the mag, you may not even see the effect of it. It's gonna be easier to see um, the higher the mag is, okay? But again, right, we're at about 200 milliseconds right now. We have um, some decent signal to noise. So when we do the series acquisition, when we sum the frames, it, it should work, okay? So, right, we have all this set here, okay? And then all we have to do is do acquire series. And it's going to take 10 frames, each at 200 milliseconds. We'll go to the acquisition or the processing window, I'm sorry. So now we see here, okay, these are the individual frames. And then we can come up here to processing, go to DCFI, and now you have two options here. If Unless you're seeing lattice or you know, a near atomic level detail, you, you really don't need to worry about the second option. So in this case, we just want to use, you know, normal DCFI. And then you can see it adds the frames together and we get nice signal to noise here. Switch this to data bar, okay. Now with the histogram here, it's, it's showing you the average for one frame, okay. So, um, if, if we added them all together, we should see 10 times what we're seeing here, but what it's showing you is just for one individual frame, okay? 
All right. So that's DCFI when we're not at atomic resolution. So why don't we we'll use this particle here and we should be able to see this or make more use of this at higher mag. So let's put the screen in. Okay. And we'll mag up here. Okay, we got a little tear in the film, so let me move away from that because otherwise we're going to get some instability. Um, let's see if this one is stable enough. I think this will be okay. Okay, so that's good here. And it, uh, maybe you can see this now, but you can see the sample is moving a little. Okay. All right, so yeah, sample's moving. So let's go ahead, see if I can get a little bit better focus with the Z. Yep, like right about there. Okay, I can see the lattice and the particle, which is which is good. Okay, we got a little bit of astigmatism here. So, okay, I already have the objective stigmators activated. There we go. Okay, we want to be on under focus side. It was actually on the over focus. Okay, and there we go. All right, so now, same thing as before, get this centered, do series acquisition. Okay, just for comparison, I'm going to acquire one frame at two seconds and let's see how it looks. blank the beam okay so this was the the acquisition at two seconds okay so now if we it, you know I can tell by looking at it that there's blurring okay there's blurring um, because the sample is is slowly drifting north so actually if you look at the FFT we can see the effect of this in the FFT okay so what we see here is that in the direction of the drift which is up and down Okay, what we see is that all of the information that is um, above and in, in the upper and lower parts of the FFT, you can see this gets cut off. Okay, so we're not seeing any, like we can see all this information and spots here to the left and the right, but we can't see it down here, okay, above and below. Okay, that's because it's, it's drifting in this direction. So whichever... Um, information happens to be, you know, aligned with like this, it gets smeared out and we can't see it. We can still see some that's perpendicular to the drift direction though. Okay. But this is one telltale sign that you have um, drift or, or smearing in your image. Okay. Is to look at the FFT. So now if we come over here to the series, now this is just one, let me go back to the beginning here. Okay. This is just one frame but I don't see the same issue, okay? I see the FFT is, I'm seeing, you know, signal in every direction, okay? So now if I drag this, okay? So yeah, if you look closely, you can see the particles slowly drifting up. Now it's not a lot of movement. We're probably talking about, you know, a nanometer or two, but that's actually quite a bit when we're talking about you know, atomic resolution, okay? And we, we'll be able to see the effect of that. So, all right, so now if we go to processing, now because we're seeing the lattice, we want to use optimize for periodic images. Okay, and it's going to sum up the frames. And beautiful, okay? So now we have a nice FFT. Now, if you look closely in the background, you see these streaks like this okay so these are perpendicular to the drift direction okay and this is an artifact of the frame summation okay um, you don't have to worry about it otherwise but that's that's a difference 
Um, if we had a, a drift free image um, that we didn't do frame summation, we wouldn't be seeing these. Okay, this um, these slants that are they're not entirely horizontal; they're off at a little bit of an angle. Okay, but that's a, that's that's an an well, I shouldn't say artifact. It's just the math, right? It's the math of summing the frames together. Okay, is we see that effect. Okay, but the FFT itself, if we look at just the information, right? We don't have the loss of information above and below that we had before. Okay, because of the drift, and we see some nice detail here. If we go back to, yeah, so I don't know how easy that is. Let me mag. Okay, so now if I if I scroll in, you can see the blurring here really pretty easily. Okay, if I come over here. Okay, so see the difference, right? I don't have the same smearing that I did uh, before. Okay, I have nice crisp image, nice sharp image. Okay, and yeah, you can see the difference here that that instability makes. Again, the signal is basically the same between the two pictures because you know I did two seconds for one frame versus um, 200 milliseconds for 10 frames. Okay, let me reset zoom, save. And let me reset zoom. Okay. Okay. Let me unblank the beam. There we go. Yeah, you can see see how much it moved here. Okay. Um, and, and now again, we're at the top end of what's called SA mode. If you go into MH mode, then I would definitely make use of the um, the series acquisition with DCFI. So why don't we actually let's do this here because it's gonna be way easier to see that instability. Let me freeze this for a second. Okay, and then, okay, so now we're into MH. Okay, so I can go over this actually, because this is useful. When you go into MH mode, you wanna um, press your centric focus, okay? Okay, reset your objective lens. Your objective lens is probably going to be a little bit different um, in MH versus SA. And now we need to focus with Z as best we can. So we're going to be deviated a little bit from where we were in SA mode, which is fine. Okay, so I'm just looking at the image here. Um, I'm not actually looking at the FFT, although I can pull this up here. Okay. So right about there, okay? Now my experience is that um, at this point, the only things, we'll have to recorrect the objective astigmatism, but we don't need to do the rotation center again. We don't need to do the objective aperture centering again. Um, we can just do the pivot points. Okay, there's one. This one's a little tricky because we have to use the ball to get it back. Okay, there we go. Okay, just so you know, I mean, like if I turn this on, right, it's going straight in and out still, so the rotation center is still good. Okay, all right, so now at this point, we can go. And we got to find the particle. Uh, where do we go? Ah, there we go. All right. All right. So I'm going to head back over to acquisition mode, start the view. OK, and so we can see there's still a little bit of astigmatism. So we'll go ahead and fix that. Okay, there we go. All right, so we can really see the lattice detail in the particle now really pretty well. 
Okay, so let's do the test again. We'll do one frame, two seconds. Ew. Okay, and then we will do the series acquisition. All right, so you can really see here the movement when we're in MH mode, right? Um, and the sample hasn't been in there long. I did that deliberately, right? Because I wanted to, you know, have some instability, okay? Um, but yeah, you can see pretty obviously, you can see the smearing in the FFT, right? So this is the drift direction. It basically, it's going like this. Um, so we're losing the detail um, that's um, aligned with the drift direction in the FFT. All right, so let's come back here and DCFI, optimize for periodic images. And beautiful, okay? So we get nice drift-free image here, okay? Every time, right? Um, and again, right, we see these features, again, which is a, a result of doing the frame summation, okay? but you can see how well this works. As I scroll through the frames, as I go from one frame, add it up to 10, it, it doesn't move at all, okay? There is a limit to how well this works um, in my experience. So if the drift is too bad, then what you might see is it might get up to, you know, some number of frames and then it'll fail. And it's usually pretty obvious because you'll actually see like a, sh a you know, a, a big discontinuity in, um, in, from one one frame added to the next, okay? But we don't have that problem here, okay? And this is, you know, perfect, so, okay? All right, so that is, let me turn that off, okay? And yeah, we see a little bit of beam drift, which is normal to have that in MH mode, so, but that is, the use of the DCFI function um, in temp mode. So as promised, so sorry I'm a day late, but um, once again, uh, you have questions, comments, go ahead, please leave them below. And um, looking forward to um, getting some more videos out hopefully soon. Okay, all right, take care everybody.